Mr. Revolver Guy here with DayAtTheRange.com. Today we will be performing an experiment of the highly subjective recoil due to porting. One with the Smith & Wesson model 13 that you see there in front with wood grips, quad port, magna ported from Smith & Wesson Performance Center. Two, you have the Smith & Wesson model 19 there in front, also from the Performance Center, but it is power ported. All the revolvers in this test are 357 Magnum capable. I will be performing a baseline test with the Smith & Wesson Model 65 and Blazer Brass ammo, factory ammo. I also have some of my own reloads, HS6, 9 grains, 158 grain XTP, loaded in PMC Brass, all sorted by me. Now let's get to the range and have some fun. Mr. Revolver Guy here with DayAtTheRange.com. I have, on, have with me today on the range three Smith & Wesson revolvers. Two of them ported, one not ported. What we attempt to do, and as you saw from some of the pictures that started this video, what we are going to attempt to do is talk about the effects of porting on revolvers. So we're going to try to shoot some across the chronograph today, the pro chronograph here. We're going to try to shoot some across the chronograph, get the numbers. We've got some baseline factory ammo we're going to use along with my reloads. We have one that we're going to use for baseline testing model, Smith & Wesson model 65. That's a three inch barrel. Uh, one from the Performance Center, Smith & Wesson model uh, 19, I'm sorry, model 13 that's quad ported from Magnaport. And then we have a Smith & Wesson Model 19 that's power ported from the Performance Center. We're gonna try to catch, when shooting it across this pistol here, we're gonna see how much it recoils, see how much it comes up or elevates, if much at all, might not be a good test this is all subjective by the way but we'll shoot for accuracy we'll shoot for um, and maybe we'll only use the rest for accuracy and then we'll try to catch recoil on camera um, I thought it might be a good idea to use the rest for recoil as well to see how much it comes up uh, but we'll see and see how the video evolves so now that we've done that let's put some rounds down range So we're going to load up five rounds in what I consider the baseline for this test in the Model 65 357 Magnum Blazer Brass factory ammo. As you saw in the pictures, it is jacketed soft point. So we got five rounds loaded up. Let's uh, see what it shoots like. All right, hopefully that's captured on film well for everybody to see. Just having a little fun at the range today. Had to do some business travel last week and um, needed to get out of the house and thought I'd get this done. So let's load up five rounds now in the Smith & Wesson Model 13 Magnaport, same ammo. See how it does. See how it feels.
Wow. Uh, definitely less recoil than the baseline model 65. Um, one thing I did notice, I have my earmuffs on, but there is more sound, it seems to be, and also what I really noticed the most is there's more percussion, it seems like, to the rear. Uh, definitely more percussion to the rear. So let's load up five rounds in the, in the uh, power port model 19. Uh, one thing I noticed, so of all three, definitely the power port has less uh, recoil. Uh, again, I know it's all subjective, but the power port, I believe, does deliver less recoil. The one thing I did notice is the wind's blowing in my face, so I believe I'm getting some unburnt powder back in my face a little bit. Um, that I'm not too fond of, but again, the wind's blowing in my face, uh, and it, it, it's, it's not really that big of a deal. I just did not notice that with any of the other pistols, uh, but definitely I think less recoil goes to the power point, power port. Um, most definitely less recoil in this one. Wow. On the first target there to the left, I was worried about that. The target on the left is for the custom model 65. I was worried about it shooting way to the left. I guess it was me from bench rest. So I took some of my reloads. The rounds in the middle are with Blazer, the factory Blazer. So then I took some of my reloads and shot two headshots one on you see on the left, one you see in the middle with my reloads. Reload still shot a little bit to the left uh, out of the Model 65, but as you can see, they grouped a lot better. Uh, and as you can see on the target in the middle, I actually put three in the same hole when really trying to focus and concentrate. So most of the time when you see the results on the target, it's me or the shooter, if you would. But what you see here in front of you our results from 25 yards uh, with each pistol we had out today. On the left, model 65, custom. In the middle, model 13, Magnaport. And finally, on the right there is model 19, Smith & Wesson Powerport from the Performance Center. Both the model 13 and model 19s are from the Performance Center shot pretty well as it pertains to subjective recoil i would say the model 19 wins out with the power port 
The one thing I do not like about the power port is the fact of the matter that with my reloads and also factory, I got some unburnt powder back into my face, if you will. Just little granules, nothing big. Doesn't hurt, didn't even sting. I just noticed it. And it happens to be that the wind is blowing in my face back at the bench. And then secondly, as it pertains to recoil, coming in second would be the Model 13 with the Magna port. And then of course, last, there was a lot of recoil out of the Model 65 with the um, factory blazer that you will that you have seen that was shot over the chronograph as well as the um, muzzle blast was a lot less. So how does porting affect pistols or at least revolvers? We'll get to that here in a second. Before we close out, let's go over the chronograph results. This is the baseline load. Blazer, 158 grain in the Model 65 turns in 1,097 feet per second. That same load in the Model 13 Blazer, factory ammo, 158 grain, turns in an average 1,016 feet per second. In the Model 19, with the same load, the Model 19 power port turns in 1,025 feet per second. Next, we load up some Hornady 158 grain XTP on top of HS6. In the Model 65, this load turns in 999 feet per second. In the Model 13 Magna port, this load turns in 957 feet per second. In the Model 19 Power port, this load turns in 969 feet per second. Now we move on to the 158 grain spear loaded on top of HS6. This load turns in 1,016 feet per second in the Model 65. In the Model 13, the load turns in 931 feet per second. And in the Model 19 power port, this load turns in 922 feet per second. So why do such a highly subjective experiment? Well, when you have someone willing to loan you two Smith & Wesson revolvers from the Performance Center, how can you refuse? Not to mention just the fun of it. The question came up, how would a power port differ from a Magna port? Both of these were ported at the Smith & Wesson Performance Center. As you saw from the chronograph results, the Smith & Wesson Model 65 with three different brands of ammunition, factory and reloaded, always turned in the higher velocity. The Model 65 is non-ported. Then you have the Smith & Wesson Model 19 with the power port. It always came in second in velocity with the three different types of ammunition. And then the Smith & Wesson Model 13 with the Magna port always came in third as it pertains to velocity. So now let's get to that highly subjective felt recoil. I would say the power port definitely turned in less felt recoil to the palm swells of my hand while shooting. I would also say that the muzzle flip or muzzle rise was a lot less with the power port than the Magna port. The one thing I did notice is that both of these revolvers turned in a lot more percussion than the non-ported revolver. You could feel the percussion of the 357 Magnum ammo in your chest and also in your face. Just more percussion, more sound. It was a lot louder out of the ported revolvers. The one thing I did notice with the power port is that the power port had unburned granules of powder that would get blown into my face. The wind on the range today was blowing directly at me in my face, but I did not notice that with the, with the Magna port. So that's one up for the Magna port. 
Now, what do we learn? From the data, porting does absolutely affect velocity. From the feel, porting reduces muzzle rise and flip and also recoil to the hand and the body. It lessens recoil to the hand and the body. Porting does not seem to affect accuracy in any way, form, or fashion if done appropriately. Mr. Revolver Guy with DayAtTheRange.com